Hello everybody! Welcome to art class. Today we're going to be learning about line. My name is Miss Howard and I'm an elementary art teacher and I'm going to be taking you through some practice on how to draw different types of line. And there are many types of line and artists use them for all sorts of reasons. The straight ones, such as your horizontal and vertical lines. Vertical is going up, that's going to show height. Horizontal is going across, that's going to show distance, like what's in the foreground, what's in the background. Diagonal, that's showing movement. And here are some different ways that, you know, you could just practice it. Uh, then there's the curved lines where you have the arched. We know that is like the rainbow, the wavy, usually showing water, spiral. I like to use that to show wind, loopy, and some different ways of putting it together here. Of course, we still have zigzag. My little ones, we call that shark teeth, castle. Okay? I call that like uh, monster teeth or kind of like squares in a way. And you can do the lines thick or thin, broken up to make dash lines, uh, zigzag downwards to make lightning or even stairs. And of course, we got the crazy lines and tornado and all kinds that we can be adding to create our artworks. So let's practice some of these. Some of you may have never done art before. So we're going to start with a simple project, but I want you to know that you can do a variation of it, and this would be more of an intermediate one. Again, using the different lines, filling the paper. Please fill the paper. Don't do a teeny tiny thing in the middle of your paper. And of course, as you get more advanced, uh, you can make your lines more swervy. Here I added some words in there but you cannot create the letters without lines. So pre-K and kinder, as you're starting this, this is going to help you learn to write beautifully and draw beautifully. Okay, this is a process journal. I got that from a dear friend who got it from a workshop. And I love the idea. It's not just a sketchbook. You can write things in it draw things in it, cut it up, glue, anything that's going to help you learn how to be a better artist. So this is my little example of what our paper is going to kind of look like. And here are the supplies that you're going to need. You're going to need a piece of paper or if you would like, put it in a spiral notebook, a sketchbook if you have it, a journal book if you have it, uh, you know, or even just start collecting your papers and keeping them in a nice little folder. Once you have your paper that you're going to work on, you're going to need something to write with. It, you can do this with pencil, you can do it with a pen, you can do it with crayons, colored pencils, markers, even paint. All right, finger paint, that would be exciting. And to help out the little ones, a stencil or a form that you can draw or trace a circle around. I used a smaller one for my sketchbook or my process journal. Okay. I'm using a larger one that I got from my coffee on, oh I'll leave these up here, on our paper here. Alright, so again we're focusing on lines and there's all kinds of lines we can do. but let's just make this a fun little project. Go ahead and place your circle in the middle of your paper wherever you want it. You can even have it part way off. Again for these examples they just had a little head showing. All right. But I like doing it in the middle because then I can go all the way around. Take your drawing utensil. I'm going to start with a pen and the main thing is you really have to hold this down and you have to make sure your pencil is touching it as you're going around 
I know that seems very simple, but I've actually had students try and follow on the outside. I love their bravery, but to make it as precise as possible, you're going to want to actually touch it and push against it so that you can make your design. Now, I'm going to use different color markers because when I'm working with my students, I want them to just play with different colors. And I love using markers with this, but again, anything works, crayons, colored pencils, or even just practicing the lines with your pencil. So if you have colors, go ahead and get one color of any kind. And let's go ahead and start practicing some of these straight lines. All right. So we can do horizontal, means it goes from side to side. So I'm going to go from my circle all the way till I fall off. From my circle all the way till I fall off. And I can do a couple of them. Or not. All right. It's up to you. This is your artwork. This is your practice. Okay. So that's horizontal, side to side. All right. I tell my students, snap the cap. Make sure you hear it pop. Change colors. Any color will do. And we're going to go to vertical. Vertical is the tall ones. Okay. And just like the horizontal, it's a straight line. And you can even, you know, add it somewhere else, wherever you want. Again, we're just practicing our lines. All right, snap that cap, change colors. Let's go diagonal. Diagonal is going to start in the middle and it's going to go towards a corner. Okay, so here is, oh, I hope this marker works. Oh, it does. All right, here it goes to the corner. And I have a corner over here. But you know what? I even have a corner down here and a corner there. So I could make it go to a different little corner. Right. And you have diagonals going down and diagonals going up. And we're starting to fill our paper. And let's go ahead and snap the cap. And if I'm going too fast, always feel free to pause it. You have the freedom to rewind and do it again if you need to. If you want to see the whole thing before you start, all of that is in your power. All right, so we covered a lot of the straight lines. Let's go ahead and start doing some curved lines. All right, get a new color. All right, we could do the arched ones which are curved, so I can go from my circle and I can curve it like a rainbow. And I can even do others with it, making it almost look like a rainbow. Or they can curve the other direction, like a smiley face going up. Just a nice start somewhere, curve and finish somewhere else curved lines. And since I really like to fill my paper in, I'm going to do a couple of them everywhere. All right, that works. When you are done with your curved lines, go ahead and snap the cap, make that popping sound, and change colors. We're moving on to wavy. Wavy is that watery ocean. Now go kind of slow on this one. It's a calm, watery day. Nice and slow, up and down. Nice and slow, up and down. And you keep moving your marker. And the next one, let's just say the water's getting a little bit more energetic. And you can go a little bit faster, up and down and up and down and up and down. Up and down and up and down. Okay. And then you could do big ones all the way up and all the way down, all the way up and all the way down. These are all wavy lines 
it's just depending on what size you choose. All right, let's go ahead and snap that cap. And we're going to skip spiral for now. We're going to go with loopy. So, changing colors. And loopy is circle, 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 circle. And you're going to keep moving it. So, if you're just starting, go ahead and just practice doing circles with your hand. Circle, circle, circle. And I actually have my students say it with me. We're going to circle, circle, move and 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 circle. Move and circle. Oop, I fell off. That's a great sign. All right. You notice I'm filling this side of my paper and I'm having problems doing this. So it's okay if you turn your paper around because I find it easier to just work on this side. You might find it easier to work on this side if this is the hand you like to draw with. There is no right or wrong. Circle, 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 circle. And just like the wavy ones, you could do smaller ones. Circle, 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 teeny tiny little circles moving along. Circle, 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 circle till you fall off. Or you could do big ones. Circle, circle, circle. All of those are loopy lines. Snap that cap change colors and let's go ahead and go with a zigzag line. I love zigzag because the Z's look like the zigzags and that kids love to do shark teeth with these mountains in the distance. Uh, uh, zigzag is up, down, down, make it pointy, up, stop, down, stop, up, stop, down, stop, up, stop, down, stop, up. And if you did okay with that, try some smaller ones and some bigger ones. Little, 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 little. Almost small enough to look like a zipper. I added another line on the other side of it. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Little, and how about a big one? Where can we do a big one? How about here? Up and down, up and down, up and down, till you fall off your paper. Snap that cap, change colors. Castle is a tough one. Castle. Let me find a nice spot for that one. Castle is like a square. You go over, up, over, down. Over, up, over, down. You try it. Over, up, over, down. Over, up, over, down, 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 over, up, and keep practicing. Again, this is not our artwork. This is warming up and practicing. You don't see football players just running out there to play football at the professional levels. They would get hurt. They actually have to warm up. In a baseball game, you usually see the pitcher do some practice pitches before he goes up to start pitching against the other team. All right, now we have thick line, 
So anything that you want to make super thick, I usually do that by going over it again, but a little bit off of it until I get it as thick as I want. And that's pretty thick right there. And maybe I'll do a thick one over here. Not as thick, but still thick. Wow, you can really see those. Okay, snap that cap. Keep changing colors. Oh, we're almost done. We have a few more to go. And let's see, thin lines. All right. Thin lines, when you're working with markers, means you usually don't push as hard on the marker. So you could do little thin lines next to each other. Or they're short, or you can do thin lines that are taller. Wherever you want to practice your thin lines. Snap the cap, change colors. And it looks like we can do some dashed lines. Dash lines mean you're going to do a line and stop. Line and stop line and stop, line and stop, go ahead and try it, line and stop, 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 line and, stop. and just keep going, that one's pretty easy, and again you can make skinny ones or you can make thick ones, that's up to you. Snap that cap, change colors. Okay. Let's go with lightning. Lightning is your zigzag, but it's going to go down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Notice it's a short up, down, big, up, short, down, big, up, down, up, down. And then if you really want it to look like lightning, you'll go next to it, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, until they slowly touch each other. And you have a really neat little lightning bolt. Again, practice, practice, practice. All right, let's snap that cap and move on to stairs. For my future architects out there, you know you love doing those pictures of inside of the house and you have the stairs going up, but you just don't know how to do it yet. Okay. Well, let's find out. To do the stairs, it's going to be down and over all the way. So, I'm going to turn my paper. So you can really see it. I'm going to work on this side. And I'm going to go over, down, over, down, over, down, over, down. Over, down, over, down, over. Oop, I bumped into my circle. Notice I haven't really put anything in that circle. All right. Go ahead and let's try stairs. Everybody go over, down, 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 and just keep going 
down, follow that pattern down, and it's an over down. Ooh. All right, snap that cap. We're going to go back to that spiral. And the spiral, let me get a color you'll be able to see. Since we're really running out of room here, which I love it. Isn't this fun looking? Oh, your parents are going to be loving this. All right, spiral. You're going to start in the middle, and then you're going to do a little circle, and the circle is going to get bigger, and the circle is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger oops I fell off oh I know that's kind of hard you do another spiral in a different color maybe you'll see it better all right again starting in the middle and then you're gonna go around that middle with a circle that gets bigger and bigger and keep going bigger and bigger I love these spirals they make the best little googly eyes robot eyes they're great for snails or seashell shapes and I just love them and I use them everywhere. I love my spirals. All right, snap that cap. And I saved the best for last. And that is called Crazy Line. Crazy Line gives it a really fun little texture. And you do that by ready, watching. Going crazy, 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 crazy line. It just wants to go wherever. A little ziggly, ziggly, ziggy, zag, ziggy. I'm not scribbling so much as much as I'm just kind of like moving my hand all over in different directions. Crazy line. All right. Now that we have all of this going on, you can do whatever you want in the middle. If you want to make a nice little smiley face, you can add two of your curved lines. You can then add what I call the letter L for the nose. And go ahead and make your little smile. Color it in if you'd like, leave it as it is, add more details. It's entirely up to you. I hope you enjoyed this line lesson. Make sure that you keep practicing your types of lines because line is one of the most important elements of art when you are drawing. Enjoy your day. Bye.